All right, here we have another tutorial for staining the EcoTop product. I'm going to go over um, different chemicals, uh, staining agents that are common around household or restaurant applications. So what we've got here is some uh, cranberry grape juice, some green tea. Uh, we've got some tomato sauce. We've also brought some kimchi and some orange soda pop. And uh, the colors we're going to be working with today. I brought a snow white sample and um, ivory colored eco top and basically um, you know we're going to clean it out with water 409 with bleach and soap and a key piece to all this is going to be a scotch bright pad the sanding process or the finishing process is going to be key. I've brought out a hundred grit sandpaper to display what the countertop is ultimately going to be started out sanding with. You'll step this up likely to a 180 and then a 220 finish followed with the same scotch right pad I talked about. This overall countertop is finished with a 220 and then a scotch bright. Alright so we're back at it here. What we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of these uh, agents and we're going to start putting them uh, onto the samples. And what, what I'll do is I'll start with um, a little bit of the green tea uh, and we'll just pour a little bit of that on there. And we'll let these sit up here for about 5 to 10 minutes. Alright, so here we are 15 minutes later. Uh, we're going to start in first with the tea. Uh, the tea bag has been sitting on um, you know, this ivory sample for at least uh, 15 minutes. It was the very first one, so it might be a little bit longer. You can see it's actually puddled up, so there's actually tea in and behind this sample, on the label, um, all around this thing. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to take it over here to the sink with just water. I'm going to throw a quick rinse on it. And now, if you really get at depth and look at this thing, tea uh, didn't leave really anything there. So next thing we'll do is we'll move on towards the tomato sauce. We've also got one sitting here in the tomato sauce. That's a Snow White piece. Snow White is perceivably the most susceptible to staining. Ivory would be the next lightest tone. This one has actually been sitting the longest so we're going to take this to the sink. We're just going to give this a quick rinse. Of course we're going to be using hot water. Now when I look at this sample I see kind of the outer ring or line of where the sauce was sitting and that was just a quick rinse. I can see where the blob was sitting up. Okay. Now I have not wiped this yet. There's nothing on the back. I'm actually going to just take my hand because I can see how easy this is going to come out. Okay, now we have zero staining on this sample. I'm trying to give you as many angles as you can with the lighting that there is not a single stain on this particular sample from tomato sauce. Next thing we're going to move to We've got a Snow White piece here that I've added since I submerged our other sample here on the table. So this sample has been submerged for about 16 to 17 minutes. This one is, or excuse me, this one has had a puddle on it for 16 to 17 minutes. This has been submerged for about five minutes. So we're going to take the sample that has been puddled up with orange soda pop. Now you can see before you've even rinsed it that I just dumped off the pop and you can see that there is a film that has created itself on the surface. You can see in the corner here by my thumb there's nothing sitting there and this is clear or the actual ivory color itself here in this corner more of the same. Now I'm going to take to rinsing it and now you'll notice as we're rinsing this it's not coming off. Hopefully the camera will actually project the sample. The orange has dimmed but it has not come completely off. You can still notice in the corners that there is still evidence of orange soda pop. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my Scotch Brite pad and I'm just going to put it in some hot water. I'm going to go ahead and give it a scrub. I'm going to do it on one half so hopefully that you can notice a difference. And again, there's no cleaning agents in what I'm using here. So now if you look at this, you can see where the orange is where I have not scotched bright anything. Okay, This entire side here where I've scotched bright padded with no solvents, no solutions, nothing but water and scrub, you can see that half of this has already come clean. Next, we're going to move on to the kimchi. Okay, This is our sample that has been set up in the kimchi here. This has been set up for about 16 minutes and we've also got one floating in the bottle of, of uh, kimchi as well. So we're going to go ahead and take this piece here. We're going to rinse it. And if you look at it, you can see where the island of kimchi was. I don't know if the projection is going to show that well, but what I'm outlining here is where the kimchi was standing out and setting up. Okay. Again, my Scotch Bright pad, no soap, just water. I'm going to give it a scrub. And I'm only looking at now one stain. The one stain left is this. You can faintly see the very first one. And I have not used any soap. And I rubbed it maybe six times. You know, a couple more times. And now you have the one stain left that I have not touched. I'm going to go ahead and rub that out. We're going to actually go to our cranberry grape is the last one that we're, we're using here. We've got one submerged, okay, and then we've got one that's been in there the longest that I actually poured everything on that you would actually see in a, in a kitchen or bar or restaurant type of application. I'm going to go ahead and pour it off. Hot water. Okay, grape juice came right out. I'm going to just wipe this out with my thumb. Scotch Bright is not even needed. No stain. We're actually going to take our sample that's been in the grape juice. And you'll notice that this is just a water line. This is not actually a stain line. Because once I throw it under water, it's gone. Okay, we'll go back to our submerged kimchi sample. Okay, and you'll notice that there's a line. Okay, we're going to go back to our, our scotch bright. Okay, and there is a faintness. There is a faintness of a stain there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan over here to the 409 with bleach and the Clorox wipes. Okay, I have not used any soap yet. Actually, we'll start with soap first. This is just hand soap. There's nothing special to this here. Take my rag. You've just hand soap. Just give it a couple wipes. Wipe down like you would at any other type of eating situation. And hand soap has gotten kimchi out of this sample. So now we've eliminated kimchi, we've eliminated cranberry grape, we've eliminated green tea. Now we're going to take go back to our submerged sample of tomato sauce on a piece of Snow White, which is the most susceptible color to staining and it just rinsed right off. That was actually submerged in tomato sauce and it rinsed right off. Again, all of these samples have been sanded down per the recommended sanding recommendations on the ClipTech website. Ended with a 220 grit or better. So we've come back to our um, 
Fanta orange soda pop samples. We've got uh, these have been submerged in here for about 15 hours at this point now. Um, what I've got here is this first one does not have any Eco Top finishing conditioner on it, um, and the second one here is finished with the Eco Top finishing conditioner. The finishing conditioner product is recommended for all the Eco Top colors. It's uh, a blend of soybean oil, coconut oil, vegetable uh, emulsifier, uh, and carnauba wax. So um, you know you'll see here that this one here um, was also covered on the surface a little bit more than than the non eco top finished um, product. So what I've got here is um, I know that soap and water um, is is not going to get this right out, and you'll see a little spillage from some of my earlier samples where this pop was poured on the the eco top. Uh, countertop surface that we're testing all these products on here and I let it set up overnight and I know that soap and water with a scrub uh, scotch Brite scrub is not going to completely get all this out it begins to faint it but it's not going to get it completely out so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you here on the the eco top finishing conditioner sample we have here I'm going to spray the 409 all-purpose cleaner on this sample and we're just going to let that set up. And we're also going to spray it on the non finish and conditioner sample. And we're just going to let that set up. So, as you'll start to notice here on the sample with the Eco Top Finish and Conditioner, it's already starting to break up the orange pop um, quite fast. And I have not yet touched it. And you'll also notice the same indicators here on the sample without the finish and conditioner. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to take my rag here, I'm going to put it under a little bit of hot water. And I'm going to take the scotch bright side of it, I'm going to go to the, the, the sample that has the finish and conditioner already on it, and I'm just going to give it a quick swipe. And Notice how easily that just came off of there. 409 just gets it right out. I'm using my fingers now and I've got it back to the original surface. Go ahead and give it a quick swipe so you can see without the suds there is no uh, Fanta soda pop on that sample any longer. Um, I'm going to move to this uh, sample here. This is the one that was not preconditioned with the Ecotop Finish and Conditioner and you'll notice the same result. My finger is literally getting this right off. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that the 409 cleaner is nothing is getting past that. We've tested cranberry grape juice, we've tested tea, we've tested tomato sauce, we've tested kimchi. Um, you know, and on other videos on our website, you'll also find things like coffee, highlighters, sharpies, uh, and that sort of thing. But what I wanted to end with is here is the longest standing stain we've got. Um, and I'm just going to take some of the 409 that is actually. Um, set up from the two samples that I just um, showed you here and I'm going to just run my finger right through there and just take some of the 409 cleaner. This is to show you how easily 409 is going to get that off. And I'm just going to wipe it away and you're going to see my two finger swipes right through that. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this real quick and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how easily the, the rest of this big stain here is going to come off. We're going to let that set there for, I don't know, maybe five seconds or so and uh, I'm going to go at it with the scotch right side and stain is now gone and to give you a better clear view of this I'm just going to get some napkins because you'll probably have a wet rag and a dry rag and stain is completely gone